Welcome to the Northern Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farrand under the company of Horns of Odin. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. It's Lee Williams. And you are the law writer for the extremely popular Valheim game. And I can't believe how popular this game is. Um, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, um, <clears throat> that's right. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote all the, the law and the sort of incidental text for Valheim. Um, and yeah, it was, a, to be honest, I think it surprised everybody how how popular uh, it was. I can't take much personal credit for it beyond, as I said, the story and the law. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it it was huge, much bigger than anybody than Richard, who you know was the driving force behind it, who created it, bigger I think than he'd expected or anybody else on yeah. the on the team. I think it was sort of um, the right game at the right moment in some ways. It had mm-hmm. uh, it had a huge degree of success. Yeah, yeah, I, I it just seems to it seemed to blow up. I think. I mentioned before, I think it was approximately 5 million um, downloads in the, or buys in the first month or, or somewhere around that. And I, I, we said, I also said, what was it? 300,000 consecutive players at once, which is a ridiculous number. That's uh, Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's a bit mind blowing. You can't really picture it. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's beyond all of your wildest dreams. Yeah, I, it was, as I say, I think nobody quite expected that. I think, I think all of us, all of us who've been had a chance to play the game before release, um, thought that it would be successful. I mean, uh, and I think, I think most of us felt that it would be a really solid. Uh, I certainly did a really a really solid indie hit. That it, it was it was a good game. You know, we knew I knew it was a good game. I played it and enjoyed it a lot myself. And I thought, you know, for people who are into this sort of thing, this sort of survival crafting, uh, Viking inspired game. It's it's quite niche, but people mm-hmm. who are into it are going to really like it. So I'd I'd expected it to be, uh, yeah, a, a good a solid sort of indie hit. But the way it went, more or less mainstream straight away with huge numbers of players. I don't think anybody was anyone yeah. was prepared for that at all. Absolutely. I think it was, as I said, I think it was sort of the it was it was the right time as well. It was um, it was during the first lockdown. I think I'm right in saying it was around about there. Yeah, when it launched, and I think it 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 also it it hit some it ticked some boxes for people in terms of what they wanted, what they were missing out missing at that time. You know, it's a big, gorgeous looking open world, um, and it, it allow it allows also a lot of social play. People were obviously, I think, missing socialising, mm-hmm. um, and it was just it's it's it was just really nice. A lot of people were really getting pleasure out of that side of it i think the fact that you can play it with a group of friends it's not competitive it's cooperative and also mm-hmm. the pace of it you can t- you can take it at your own pace yeah so you, you don't have to be focusing on the game all the time you can actually go into it and hang out there with your friends you can you know take a sailing trip build a house together all those sort of things so i think you say nice take a sailing see- trip i saw what's in the sea I'm not taking a sailing trip anywhere. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this, this, it's not. Maybe it's not the most relaxing thing to do. In fact, I was, I was possibly. terrified, and I wasn't even playing. I was just watching. I was like, "Oh, what's this thing that's trying to eat me?" Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sailing's they're not always so relaxing. I, you know, what? I've always been terrified of drowning in games ever since the first Sonic on Sega Mega Drive. Oh, because. It used to have yeah. that really horrible music that came on. It was it like, did. Duh, 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 and it was terrified just, me as a child you've just given me a minor trauma that i've forgotten about yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it did didn't it i remember that it was, it was horrible yeah. yeah ever since then i've just any swimming in games and also i think tomb raider as well the first tomb raider where she like visibly chokes she, she and drowns thr- that's right she does yeah and I, i've just been terrified of like yeah. any water in any game i'm just like nope i'm not doing this bit just pass yeah. the controller to somebody else you you do the swimming bit I know, I know exactly. And there's a lot of games, of course, because a lot of earlier games, um, you d- people did they didn't want to have to put in a whole system for swimming and things. So if you're going back to like early consoles and things, the water was just toxic. Most places, if you fell in the water, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, game over. That's it. It doesn't matter if your character is somebody who otherwise you think, well, they should be all right in a river. They just swim to the bank. No water, dead. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's that's. I mean, because imagine swimming. Especially with earlier games, the mechanics of making somebody swim and making it look yeah, I think it's probably just so too much of a problem. headache. Now we can't be bothered with that. What are they going to do? Just paddle around, and it will take us the development team, you yeah. know, <laughs> ages to just be able to allow them to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's let's give like a quick rundown for what Valheim is because there'll be a huge portion of our 
listeners who have never probably never even heard of it or at least never may have heard of it and never played it um so do you want to do you want to take that and just yeah do um, a brief introduction to it it's a um <clears throat> it's a it's a game it's a sort of survival crafting game uh so it's a it's a it's a big open world game the the map is randomly generated from a seed uh every time so you'll get a different map every time you start a new game uh and you're dropped into this world which is um according to the game's law which is the the 10th world uh mm. north world we've we've just added we just added an extra one on for the which purposes I, of the game i um, i like that because it's it's different it means you can do your own thing and you're not going to get all these little viking bros who are like that's wrong exactly oh, yeah, yeah. you can you can create craft your own world and but it's separate but it's part of and it's i like that's that it. it's fun yeah i mean me too that that for me that was it was exactly that it's a lovely way that if somebody says well oh, hang on that's not right i can say well in, in valheim it is yes. it's, it's the 10th well you can get away with anything so we can exactly that we can be inspired and draw on uh norse culture and mythology and so without um being completely bound by it mm -hmm. so it you know, it, it, it made sense. Um, and that, yeah, the premises of the game is that you get, you get taken from the battlefield by a Valkyrie dropped off, uh, in Valheim, which is a sort of purgatory almost. Uh, there's a backstory where, um, Odin has tasked you with destroying these, 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 uh, these beasts, these ancient enemies that have been, mm -hmm. He aeons before he sundered the realm of Valheim and cast it adrift, and now they're growing in power again, and they're calling out, and Yggdrasil is becoming unbalanced and reaching out to them. So you've been tasked with destroying these uh, these sort of monsters. Um, but other than that, the way you go about that is, I mean, well, the game's still in development, and you you can't actually arrive at the end of it yet. There's five, six of the enemies in place at the moment. Um, and you go about it, as I said, the way you go about it is you, when you arrive there, you arrive with nothing. So you need to craft things. So you, you, you know, you, you cut wood, you hew stone, you can begin to make yourself a shelter. There's lots of very detailed survival mechanics in there. You need warmth, mm -hmm. you need to cook food, you need to start hunting, making your own clothes, making your own weapons. Eventually you get, <clears throat> you get to be able to, to mine iron ore uh and you start smelting and things and and it can get it gets quite complicated you can you can end up making big stone fortress i mean some of the things that people have made in the game are amazing huge mm. deep elaborate fortresses yeah. um uh and the nice thing about it as, as i think i mentioned earlier is that you can play it you can play it with a group of friends on the same server so you 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 collaborate to you know to uh and, and a lot of i think what really appealed to people about valheim as well is the exploration because as i say the map is different every time mm -hmm. so you get dumped in the uh the in the center of it where there are these uh rune stones which kind of explain to you what to do uh, yeah. but you don't know anything else of the land outside of those so you very very gradually kind of clear the fog and start and the map is huge oh it's it's, it's so enormous. big when when eddie my friend was was playing he uh pop them little map up and because it's all it's all gray like grayed out and he just kept like zooming out and i'm like that's and just his little area and he's like yeah i've been playing this for like 20 odd hours and i'm like what have you been doing yeah. <laughs> what, what, what have you been doing you've gone nowhere and yeah. there's just all and he's like yeah this is the next boss i have to go kill all the way over here yeah exactly that's it and it's and it's 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 it, it's paced really nicely um i mean richard did a, a you know an amazing job I, I I can't explain this one to you really because I don't know it myself. But how he made the how he made the seed work so that it every every world when you generate it you have different biomes in different places. But it kind of makes sense. It feels real. It's not just things chucked in next to each other. Yeah, it, it all blends. It, it, it all blends beautifully. It's organically kind of you know it, it feels real. And um, as you as you start to explore through it, you know you find or I did that, um, you know I can still tell you like in my valheim world where you need to go to get to one place from another i can picture the route just like i would if i'm going down the road to the shop oh, really? like, there's, there's a grove with there's a grove with seven trees there there's the area over there that i flattened when mm -hmm. i mined it and that you know that you, you spread out naturally so gradually you're forced to spread out quite gradually because you've got to you know get collect resources and so on yeah um that as you go you you really come to know the world around you, which is, it's quite, it's a nice experience. It's, it is fascinating. Um, 
because like i think we you know we spoke a little bit before and i, I profess that whilst i i like games and i was a a big gamer as a as a kid i just don't have the time to to game anymore so it's just especially with something like this where you see people have put 50 hours in 100 hours in and they're <laughs> still nowhere near finishing it and it was it was lovely to be able to just go around like say go around to my friend's house and just watch him watch him play and watch him panic about losing all his stuff because yeah. uh, that was the thing that yeah. i found like when we got eaten by the the little sea monster that gave me heart palpitations um he's like oh yeah my stuff's all gone i'm like what do you mean but yeah my, everything i've got's gone yeah like, you don't want to die shit. in the ocean yeah and if you and if you die on land and you you leave it somewhere there's actually there's a group Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could call her out by name, but I can't think of the name. But there, there are a group of Valheim players. Who oh, you are told me about this. You they, told me about this. They go. And they, they'll get your stuff back for you. Yeah, you can. If you lose your stuff, you've gone way out of um, your comfort zone somewhere, yeah. and you and it's been dropped in an area that's swarming with enemies who are way too powerful for you. They will come. You can invite them into your server, like a kind of extraction squad. Yes. <laughs> They're real, like super badasses, and they'll just go mm -hmm. and get your stuff for you and bring it and bring it back. And that's they, they just do that as a service. It's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's that he's brilliant. When he when Eddie was telling me about that, I'm like, that's that's it, but what do they want? It's so good, but what what do they want? He's like, no, they just do it because they just love the game. They, they, they like, just love it. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. it's, like, <laughs> it's great. So it is so good because you know if. If you take something with you that you maybe you don't want to lose, it's nice that you can go and get it back. Because yeah. oh, just, just to explain, like for anybody, you you have like your your house, your like home base that you make, and this is where you forge items and collect everything. And but when you go and venture out, you can you t can take as much as you can carry. But especially if you're going to fight a, a boss or whatever, you need to take some good weapons with you. But if you die, you yeah. wake back up in your house, but you've lost everything you took with you. So you then have to go, uh, you, at least the good thing is at least you can go and pick it up from wherever yes. it was. Yeah. But if it's really kind of far away and like you say, in uh, hostile territory, it's difficult to get back. Yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to do. I've done it a few, I'm sure most players have done it a few times. Mm -hmm. Lost. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing I, I wanted to touch on before when you were talking about the different biomes, it's, it's, balanced in a way that you have to <clears throat> mine and find new items to go and explore them because if you go i think if you go into the mountain range you you have to be warm or if you go to the yes. swamp you have to like poison defense um so you you can't stay comfortable and stay in your little zone because you have to go to these little areas but you also just can't expand too soon and go i'm just going to run around everywhere and discover everything straight away because you have to spend the time to so it's, it's nice that it kind of makes you do the bits you can't just cheat almost that's right yeah and i think i think that's one thing that richard and the, the the team at iron gate spent a lot of time uh kind of figuring out how um or testing rather and and and, and developing how to best to pace that mm -hmm. so as you say that you can't you know you've got certain but you don't you don't want it to you don't want players to be stuck in the same place too much no um but equally you don't want them to be able to just rush <clears throat> all over the map that wouldn't be as satisfying an experience either so it's it, it, i know richard was inspired a lot by um by some of the by the earlier zelda games um, okay you know in that you you know you you'll get an ability that unlocks a new area and the mm -hmm. way that can all tie together um and yeah a lot of thought went into thinking how best to to sort of pace to pace that yeah yeah no i like that and it's nice that it's not too guided it's not too too spoon fed either like you have this is like getting more towards like your work you have these little bits that um you know these rune stones that tell you bits of the story but for the most part you're just dropped in there and it's like go and go and figure it out go ha go have fun and like you just tapped on the bum and just sent off and it's like go fight go find some stuff and figure out what you can make from it and take it back to your little house, build your house. And you're going to work out that you're going to need an ax. So figure that out. How are you going to make an ax? And it, you know, it's not, I think i not, I don't know so much with, well, yeah, probably with games as well for the, for the ones that I've played, especially like the big boss blockbuster ones. Um, they, they tend to like really spoon feed everything. You know, you play games where it's like, as soon as you walk near something, it's like press X or press like do, and they're just telling you what to do. There's no like thinking there anymore. 
Um, yeah, the same absolutely. as movies. Movies do it as well now. Like they just spoon. Like there's a big twist coming up. It's like let's ram it down the throat where the twist is and not let you figure it out. Whereas I like that in games like this where you just have to, you have to work it out. Yeah, that's right. And I think I'm a I'm I'm a big fan of games like that as well. Uh, and like you, I don't. I, I I kind of feel if it's if it's if I'm being led by the nose through the game too much, you sort of think well, I don't know why why I'm playing. <laughs> you know why yeah. I could I, I could watch this. I don't need to. To, uh, to think much while I'm while I'm playing so I think that was very much part of the sort of design philosophy of, of Valheim that um the intention was to to create a world that you could yeah as you say you could dive into for yourself and explore and figure things out and there's a lot of there's a lot of pleasure um I'm thinking being able to do that and we wanted also I think you know from from, from my point of view from a narrative point of view um I wanted players to be able to have their create their own stories within the game we did i think there was a discussion at one point about uh how much characters should be how much players so we should be able to customize their character at the start did we want to have it more bespoke so you have a you know they are they're playing as a specific character mm-hmm. you're playing you know did we want like a named uh warrior that or okay. a few alternatives of named yeah. warriors at the beginning that you could play as with backstories and with real motivation. But I think we felt, and, and I think it was the right choice, that it would be much better to, you obviously can customise the appearance of your character however you want, but past that, it's just, it's your character. Um, and the the idea in the lore uh, of the game, the, the idea is that you've been, you've been taken from Midgard, dropped in, Valheim you've only got the foggiest sort of memories of your mm-hmm. previous life so when I wrote in the game when you sleep sometimes you get dreams um and I wrote in a lot of the dreams you have the, these vague memories of, a, of of an open fire or of holding somebody's hand or of sailing on a ship or hearing gulls and things like that but past that you don't get anything of your past life so there's no sort of backstory there but the nice thing I think is that it lets players it gives them a blank slate to just you know, freedom, you're dropped in this new world um, and you just do what you want to do. Uh, and you don't kind of, you don't, you don't sort of put points into um, abilities or anything like that. You just, you just craft things for yourself and you do, you, you, for example, if you run about more then you're, you're, you're able to get more stamina to run, you know, so yeah. things that you do, you get better at, but basically you're allowed to just take that, in your own direction um so i i I wanted from a law point of view i wanted it to be very very minimal in many ways uh Mm -hmm. you know the the law that that there's that there's not there's almost there's also there's not a part uh, other than you having to slay these 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 ancient beasts um which happened which happened which is a very slow process anyway yeah Um, you know, it takes a long time even to get to the first one. So, but past that, there's not really, uh, there's not really much of a story going on there, but there's a lot of opportunities to create your own stories, mm-hmm. which I think is probably w- within this game and, and that world is more satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. Because when in a, you know, in a game where you're spending, you know, hundreds of hours, you, that's a long time. Like yeah. it's it's a long, long time to be in there. So you're naturally gonna just create your own world, I think. And it enhances the the experience, I think. And I think part of that is why a a movie rendition is never as good as a book, because you've created your own world. Yes, you you've yeah, you've got the the story and the pages, but as you're reading it, you're imagining it in your mind. And and no matter what movie comes out after that, it's never gonna be what you've created. And that's probably similar with this. It's like you spend all this time here and yes, you've got the the canvas there, but you get to create your own little backstory with you and your friends hanging out and going and slaying these beasts. And if you lose your, your stuff, you can get the, get the mercenaries in his <laughs> mercenaries in to come and get it for you. But yeah. you get to, you get to do that, but you also get like this slight undertone of a story that, that, that pulls you through. Yeah, uh, exactly. I think hopefully, uh, hopefully, what I would like to think anyway is that the law is enough there that it gives you a flavour of the world, um, and as you say, like an underlying mm-hmm. kind of it gives it, um, it gives a bit more purpose to the world around you, but without being sort of prescriptive that it's telling you what to do. Uh, so you can, you know, you can spend as much time in the world as you want, doing whatever you want, 
and the law is just there to, to hopefully bring it to life a bit yeah that, that was yeah that was like i mentioned to you before that was one of the the first questions i wanted to ask specifically about you and your and what you did was how you go about writing the law for something like this where it's not it's not a linear game like something like god of war where it's you start here you you finish here and we can you know you can have this there's this story that goes through and it's like an also a to b whereas with this like you say every map is different everybody starts different the way everybody plays it will be different some will be more aggressive some will take the time making more items and it's all different so how do you try and tie that in to like see having one underlying story when it's so subjective to each individual person yeah i I think well as i said i think that i think the key was really to um to 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 basically to take the story down the story is the bare elements of the story really are just this obligation that odin has put on you as communicated uh to you at the start by his ravens to destroy these these beasts i mean there's not i can't there, there will be some. There is some more story coming later because I said the game's still in development. But I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much now. I might get in trouble if I yeah, if I no, don't watch my words a little bit at points. Of course. So of there's, course. there's, there, there are more things to come uh, later in in terms of that. But uh, the game as it stands now, as far as it's gone now, really, you've just got this this vague quest to prove yourself, to prove yourself worthy of, of Valhalla by um, uh, obeying. Odin's wish that you, you you destroy these these beasts, but other than that, as I say, we, I try, we tried to just sort of remove the story from it completely, more or less. So, I mean, for me, the first thing I I did was come up a lot, a, along with Richard with the premise of the game, the idea of the tenth world, uh, and I think when we settled on that, because to begin with, a lot of the game, as I recall, was in place the actual mechanics of the game before we came up with that. So there was was talk about you know should it be set in like a real historic location, mm-hmm. um, but then that's odd because it, it it was always apparent that part of the appeal of the game was going to be the fact that you could generate you know it, it would generate a random map each time. Okay. Um, so that kind of rules out setting it somewhere. We we could have said oh it's a we could have made up an island that they travel to or something possibly. Mm-hmm. So that was an idea. Yeah, or, may, or think, maybe like your home base could be. An historical place. Yes. Every, I guess I guess everyone's going to have the same kind of you, you, home, you, land, little plot, maybe. They're very, I mean, in Val, it's only really is literally the one, the, the kind of circle of stones that you get dropped into. It's yeah. the same for everybody. And then past that, everything's kind of uh, is randomized. But yeah, we did, we, we did discuss doing that or a few different approaches. Um, but it clicked when we came up with this notion of the 10th world. Um, because as you mentioned earlier, it just, it gave, it gave a lot of freedom to do what we wanted, but at the same time to draw as much as we wanted from, from real historic mm-hmm. context. Um, oh, and, and then- it's, it's just, sorry to, sorry to jump in. It's just better, I think for, for yourselves all around, because I mean, I love this community clearly, you know, I, I have a podcast in it, I have a business in it, um, and I just enjoy it all around. But some people can be dicks <laughs> because when it comes to like this stuff, because because we we actually know very little about it, um, and a lot of it all comes from like a couple of sources. The but it is it, again, it's almost ca- kind of like the game itself. We have these little nuggets that we know for certain, but the rest is so vague that everybody then creates their own mythology around what Nordic yeah. mythology is, and then they get super attached to that, and that's theirs. But then it's not it's not the same as everybody else's and it can't be because we just don't know there's so much that we just we just don't know so but it, it so it's beautiful that you can create it and attach it to yourself and and put yourself into it as well but also people get really attached to it so if you do it do it wrong almost again like the book and the and the movie if you do it not how they're looking at it, it's like that's wrong this is wrong you've not done that right it's like it's not wrong it's just not the way you've it's interpreted the, yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So and it's I, nice that you've stepped away from that and you avoid that because you're like, no, this is my world, which is a part of this. Fuck off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In nicer that's, words. That's exactly that's that's the best way of putting it. And to be honest with you, I was sort of aware of that making it as well. Yeah. I, I I was pleased with that because for that reason, because I've you know I've written sort of historical fiction and things before, and you will get people, you know, oh yeah, 
come at you with and i don't mind it because I'm, I'm quite happy to take on on board uh criticism and, and you know if somebody picks up an error i'm quite interested but mm-hmm. you will get people who who will email you oh, like really? you know 20 pages of notes <laughs> on things that they don't i don't they don't believe happened in that way or you know so so uh yeah it's lovely that i can just say no it's that's what ha- that's how it works in Valheim. That's mm. you know, get over it. That's what happens in Valheim. Yeah. But it's a, it's a perfect little get out. It's clause. a little get out clause. It's nice, yeah. <laughs> so when they email you that, what do they expect? Are they are they expecting you to be like, all right, we're gonna cheat. We're- you know what? We're going to change the whole game. <laughs> I'm going to go back and change all that. For you. The yeah. whole game's getting changed now because know. you sent this email. <laughs> I think sometimes people just want to get it off their chest, and that's fair enough. I'm quite good. I'm quite thick-skinned like that, personally. Yeah. I will usually, I will usually reply and say, "Oh, thanks very much." You know, that's interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then, I, and then ignore it. No, I don't. No, yeah. I don't ignore it because I will. As I say, I'm, I am interested to have those kind of discussions. But yeah, but some people, some people can take those discussions a little bit too seriously yeah, oh, yeah. I, I bet. um and that actually pulls me on to to another question um you know i i'm taking all these questions as my own they actually did come from my friend um so i do oh, have to, I, I do have to give eddie full credit for a, a lot of these um like i say i went around and hung out with him until three o'clock in the morning the last couple of nights and we we played the game but he loves games he's he's a big game fan he loves the mechanics behind it so he really helped me out kind of like looking at different different ways to look at it. Um, and you, you said about how it's still in development and it's still kind of, well, it's still being made. It's not, it's not finished. It yeah, that's um, right. yeah. So how does that, how does that work for you in terms of getting feedback when you get one of these emails? Do you then take that on board and, and put it into it? Or are you already pretty set on um, where it's well, going? I- how far in advance are you? with it to, to be honest I, I must i must admit i've not i've actually i, I use the example of getting emails for things but i've not i've not had any about well, maybe because we well, managed to set it there i'm thinking i was thinking more of when i've written some different bits of historical fiction and things in the in the past oh but okay actually, we've not really had it for valheim um but having said that there were some things what did i change i changed a few of the rune stones because they were a bit misleading oh there was one i'd written one that said um Oh, I'd written one about somebody had said they, they'd seen a star come unfastened from the sky and fall near there. Um, and it was meant to, to to say that you can you can get a kind of metal like a, from meteors at a certain point in the game and a certain mm-hmm. place in the game. So it was meant just to vaguely to suggest that. But unfortunately, a lot of people read that runestone and assumed if they wait by the room stone, oh, that no. same thing will happen. So I was, I was oh, no. responsible <laughs> for loads of players, uh, just like waiting. Some people I think probably oh, waiting for hours. hours. By the room stone. Like where, where is it then? I'm sure that must be a hint that something's going to fall from the sky oh, here. God. Uh, and nothing did. So we changed the wording on that. Yeah. And there were a couple of others that I'd, I'd accidentally worded them as if, as if they meant something that they didn't. So <laughs> when we got feedback yeah. on those, I said, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll go back. We better get, we better change those ones. So that's, mm-hmm. I guess, but well, that's part of it being in development. You've you put in, yeah, absolutely. It's, out there. it's a big game, and it's a really small team. The studio at Iron Gate, they do you know a fantastic job, really, for just a few of them. Um, and it really is a big game. It takes a lot of careful balancing, um, mm-hmm. you know. And I think, I mean, uh, there have been, you know, some people have have said, "Well, why don't they? You know, now they've made a lot. Why don't they take on? Um, why don't they take on fifty more coders and what is it? But it doesn't." It doesn't quite work like that. Some of the magic of it comes from it being that small team, yeah, with that absolutely. very tight, focused uh, vision, and you 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 can't always, um, you know, you just add people in. It doesn't it doesn't work like that exactly. Uh, you know, so yeah. got, it, it, it's a it's a passion project, and everybody yeah, involved it, it, is the passion, it, and they've been probably been there from the start. Absolutely, yeah, it is. I mean, Richard's been. I've I I first um, worked with Richard on a game that he was developing. Uh, just for free called Torocco. It was like a space opera sort of thing okay. uh, a few years ago now. And I, it was almost like a proto Valheim. A lot of the, the, the ideas that he then put in place in Valheim were developed during that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, that was a pure passion project. And then Valheim, when he decided, when he, he left the studio where he had been working to set up on his own and make really his dream game, which was Valheim. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's been sort of his, vision him and henrik and some of the others at iron gate their, their vision that's sort of they've known what they wanted to create right from the right from the start that must be uh, you might know an answer to this better than 
than I would is how often does a game this in development kind of take on take get this big? Because I imagine when it's in development, you put it out there. Is it mainly just for the testing, so you can find out flaws with with like with wording or if yeah, there's I mean, little it, things it, that are quite it, wrong? Whereas this five million copies in the first month or whatever, it's now on Xbox Pass. Um, like it, 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 it's not finished, but it's huge, and there's tons like 30, 30, um, sorry, three hundred thousand people playing it consecutively. So it's it's this giant thing but it's also not finished how yeah how it's, does that work it's, it's odd and to be honest you know i mean i'm not probably not the best person to ask that in in some ways because um it kind of it amazes me too it's a fairly new thing i guess the idea of early access as being a state that can continue for a length of time while a game's in in development um and valheim was unusual because i think it was it was probably one of the first games that was released into early access being already you know, highly playable, having hours and hours and hours of oh, playtime yeah. just to see everything there was in that first iteration of the game. Um, but there's, you know, the roadmap is still, there's still, there's still quite a lot to add before it will be completely finished. So I think it's sort of, sort of unknown territory. I wish I could answer the question <laughs> a bit with a bit more precision, but um, it, it surprises me too. Yeah. I mean, the way I work really is, is just when, when the new, biome is being introduced a new part of the game um i i go in I go, I go into it i get to go into it early which is lovely and just kind of run about round and do my thing and get hit by trees and and things i'm not always very good uh but uh i then draw on my experience in that and what i already know of what i want to do with the story to come up with the law for the new area so we'll have a bunch of new rune stones we'll go in new dreams some incidental text things mm-hmm. things like that yeah, that's what I sort of do. I just wait. I wait for the call, and then and then I yeah. dive back in. So it's uh, is, is that nice. so is that how it works? Is that they'll give you, you'll just get given the area, and they're just like write, go write, write something for this. It's not that you write the because I because I, I would have assumed that you'd write the law, and then they build the the little no, world I, around I, it, not the I other guess, way around. I guess it does. They sort of inform. It's it sort of inf- it it does go both ways. Okay. Uh, a bit. Um. But most of the most of the time now they've got a they've got a vision for what um the challenges they want in the next area. So the kind of enemies they want to introduce, the kind of new mm. crafting materials they want to introduce. So often I will have I'll have conversations with Richard and suggest some things that will tie into the law. Um and so we'll have a bit of to and fro very often um about what's going to work for story, what story there is, as well as as well as mechanically. Um so it kind of goes both ways a, a bit. And then once it gets fixed uh, and you can actually play it, um, then I'll be able to go, I'll, I'll be able to go in, I'll be let loose in the new area. Uh, and then I, I, I mean, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of what I did, I remember writing the first rune stones. Um, it's quite, I don't know. It's, it's odd. I, I think it's probably odd even within games development, but I just spent a lot of time sitting in Valheim uh, just like just looking at the scenery and just thinking, like dreaming up poems and things to go and bits of lore, what people, what stories people might be living in that world uh, that they might write on the runestones. There's a lot of runestones written by the same character, which is Ulf, who's a slightly comic sort of character. Um, okay. He doesn't really like anything. He doesn't, he gets, he, he hates all the different biomes. It's, they're too cold or they're too hot or it's too dangerous or he, a tree fell on his head. Um, and things like that, and that that was my character uh, in the game. That was that was the character that I played. Uh, he, sounds, so, he sounds like a grumpy Yorkshireman, to be honest. Yeah, he's he's a grumpy Isle of Wight man. He is, and he's just <laughs> me, basically, in the game, just grouching yeah. and dying in lots of uh, unfortunate ways. <laughs> I mean, it would be though. That's what I I feel like. That's what I would be like. Just like it's too cold. <laughs> too warm here like this bit's too warm this bit's too cold i don't want to have to smelt bronze just let me just let me live just yeah. let me just live in this little bit here i want exactly yeah. i want some i want some peace <laughs> yeah. give me a little bit of peace and quiet um but that's not why we play games i guess no 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 that's true it would be a bit boring if, if it was just like that yeah I, was, I mean, I get, but some of the nice 
some people would love it still. There would still be a, a huge group of people who would just love it. Oh, true. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people do. There's a lot of people who play Valheim and they don't get past the first sort of biome. They just, mm-hmm. they just want, they just sit there and fish, build a house, which yeah. is great. You know, you can it play is, it like that. It's, it's not what I, why I would play a game, but I understand because, you know, everybody lives different lives and we all have different, ex, you know, experiences of what we can and can't go and see and you know i'm i'm looking if i live in i live in yorkshire i live five minutes drive from um just been out in the country and anybody who follows me on my personal instagram like i spend my weekends going around historical places just making videos like look at this cool thing that i found um, but they're all within like an hour and a half drive of where i am i've just got you know, so much history on my doorstep and so much yeah, beautiful yeah. scenery, but not everybody does. Some people, they they live their whole lives in a in a like metropolitan city. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so getting out and and it's not it's not a viable option to be able to just go and fish. No, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. I they mean, can I, just I, spend that time and and do it in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, and I, I'm the same as you. I'm very lucky here where I am on on the island, and we're on the edge of the countryside. Uh, and I, I spend most of my free time, I, I go out, I go out walking, uh, you know, I, I go around the area here. So I'm, I'm lucky with that. But as you say, there's a, there are a lot of people and there was a lot of feedback saying that from a lot of people. And as I said, it was, it was when it launched, it was in the first lockdown. And so there were, there were a lot yeah, of people I can imagine absolutely. if, you know, if you're living in a city again, I was very lucky here that we don't, there's not many people around here anyway so it's no problem for me to keep two meters away from somebody so Mm -hmm. for myself and the family it didn't affect us so much but i can imagine a lot of people you know if you're living if you're living in the middle of a city and you can't go out uh and you you know you start something like Mm -hmm. valheim i think was a really nice release for a lot of people um you know a a way to a way to sort of do that yeah i absolutely i didn't even think about that aspect of just you know, when when we were all locked up in uh, in our houses, like say again, I you know, I could you get your hour, your allotted hour that you're allowed to go out for a walk. I I can be in the middle of nowhere in an hour if I'm walking. Um, but for a lot of people, there are in the, the main hubs like London. You know, you you're struggling to stay away from people. Um, and even then, you're not really getting out into into nature. Sure, there's some parks, but it's not quite the same. Whereas you get to go into this world where you can do anything. You know, you can you can spend your day, you spend your whole day just being like a, a farmer, or yeah. you know, like yeah. chopping down wood and making things. And it's this you can live this life that maybe you don't get the chance to and romanticize. And it's you're like, oh, I'm going to work now. I'm going to go fill something in, in Valhalla. Um, and it is a beautiful game as well. You know, it's it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't take any any credit for that, but the the the, the artists uh, and and Richard, they, the the work they did on, um, because it's not it's it's quite kind of it's quite low poly a lot of it, so it's it's more impressionistic almost. The, 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 but it it feels beautiful i think you know that yeah. you see you see the you see uh yggdrasil in the yeah, sky yeah. above you and always so very and domineering night, and it's there it lights up it's it's lovely and the, the the just the general feel and mood uh and patrick who did the music as well the music is is lovely uh you know and really nice sort of pastoral music in a lot of it yeah um lulling you into that false sense of security when a big <laughs> troll comes along before something <laughs> smashes you yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Uh, am i right in thinking that the game's only one gigabyte in size it's tiny yeah it's it tiny. Is. it is i don't again i'm I'm afraid i'm the wrong person to ask how that's possible <laughs> but it is it's shockingly small um so i don't know how richard did that what magic he used to do that so I, I don't understand I, I, I feel i feel uh a two minute video on the weekend and i'm like that's 600 megabytes it's tiny isn't it it's it, and yeah i don't know quite how that works it's such a big game with so much that you can do i know obviously the resolution is is quite low it's quite but it's not even that it's it's i guess it's pixelated but it's not like minecraft pixelated no it's, no it's, it's still, still it just looks like an older video game yes yeah yeah it's still, think- I mean, I I really like I I I really personally I I like more. I'm not I'm not kind of over worried about you know like really high resolution or or or, or detail in things. I kind of think that's not what I look for in a game almost. Um, 
that... I'm quite happy for it to be a bit more impressionistic, a bit more, you know, stylized. Yeah, I think you soon you soon get used to the graphics. So you can look at it and it's beautiful, but that novelty wears off. You know, when if you're spending 20 hours, 25 hours, 100 hours on a game, you're going to get bored with the visuals or at least used to it. And occasionally you might go, yeah, this is really beautiful. But it's something about like Valheim. It's all about the gameplay and the things you can do. That's what draws you in. The graphic, it, like it is a beautiful game, but it's not, you know, it's not the highest resolution, most realistic graphics, but it doesn't need to be. You're there for the for the love of the game and everything you can do in the mechanics. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think there's clearly the the charm to it as well. Is that? And I I don't know if this is a somebody described it. I saw it described as uh, I guess a, a an adult Viking Minecraft. And I don't know if that's uh, I don't know if that's offensive that's or good, not. But that's it feels very accurate. Good, yeah, that's I think that's a good that's a good way of selling it. Really, of uh, yeah, it, essentially. It's essentially it is yeah it's it's it it hits the same it's got the same it appeals to all those categories really i think if you're into an open world crafting uh adventure but you know minecraft i mean i play minecraft with my son sometimes um but then we had a lot of fun together in valheim too that was another nice thing for me i played mm-hmm. it with my eldest boy uh yeah it's nice that was a nice experience did he get um, to play it before everyone else as well he did, yeah. So yeah. He, was very, he was very pleased. That gave him a load of kudos at school. That was... oh, I bet. I bet. I bet. So, yeah, because Vikings yeah. are cool, aren't they? Let's be honest. That's why we are all, exactly. We're all into yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Exactly. We all pretend it's for other reasons, but really, it's just because they're cool. They are cool. They are cool. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Um. So when you when you're writing the law, I mean, obviously, I haven't delved super deep into it. Um. How? What have you faced when it comes to incorporating like things like gods have you avoided avoided that when it comes to like real life gods that we know of you know like thought so oh you can confirm this for me sorry uh eddie said that apparently (laughs) i'm just like eddie said so my mate eddie said (laughs) (laughs) he was saying that apparently odin pops up every now and then or it's possible he said he's never seen him but he's heard on the grapevine that apparently odin can just pop up in the in the woods and he's just like watching you he does. He does I'll, occasionally. He does. He's I'm gonna only, let, I'm gonna I, let me, I've, let only, I've glimpsed him. I've only glimpsed him once. Um, he he will. He'll just stand watching your. Um, he'll just stand watching you, and and if you approach him, he goes. But yeah, occasionally, occasionally he will, and occasionally in a thunderstorm, you might see somebody else in the sky. Oh well. really? That's, an, that's another. That's another little one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so so that yeah they're there, but it was very much a conscious decision. Uh, to keep them keep, keep let them keep some of their mystery a bit mm-hmm. uh and i wanted to do that with the the lore as well um so they yeah. are there and some of the rune stones will talk about uh will talk about the gods and odin kind of communicates in a way but yeah i wanted i didn't what i didn't want and i, I know richard didn't want either but i didn't want odin to like sort of roll up with a conversation and you have a conversation and you, you've got a dialogue tree it, it, and, and that mm-hmm. that would just it i think it's much more powerful to oh i agree uh, just have you know have them there as a kind of presence mm-hmm. uh but don't try and yeah um, it makes approach much, them too closely yeah it's much more mysterious and it, it yeah it's more inviting for me because it must be i don't think i'm trying to think about which way to do so like an example for me is the when they do it in horror films. So for me, one of one of the in recent years, I'm a big horror horror movie fan. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the film Mama. Um, it was like a, a horror oh. movie about I think they found two orphan children. Like the I haven't the seen movie. it. I'm aware. I'm aware of it. So I've got and, a friend who keeps telling me to watch it. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. For the first two thirds of the film, scary film. It's a good film. Like. A little bit, you know, it, it, it does its job. It's, it's a horror movie. And then they show Mama. Because up until that point, they haven't shown her. And right. she's terrifying. And then you see her. And she's, yeah, it's this creepy, creepy lady. And it, But it's like, you were much scarier in my mind than, yeah. than now. Uh, and then it suddenly just loses its, loses its kind of thing. It's just like, I'm not scared of you anymore. It's not, it just takes me out of the film. And that's kind of the same thing with this, like, you, you, these gods are there, and you're always, you're always kind of like, oh, maybe I'm going to see 
maybe I'm going to see Thor. Maybe I'm going to see Odin. And like you say in there, like he can sometimes be in the woods. So you're always looking yeah. and it makes it so much more exciting than him just popping up every two minutes. Definitely. Yeah. And I think if you do see him, it's, you, you, it's only enough distance. It's the silhouette. You see a man with a staff and a broad hat. Yeah. You expect, uh, you know, and, and that, and that's it. You don't, and again, if, if, if we'd have had a model that you can go right up close to him and we've detailed him with a beard, he's got an eye missing, etc., and, and he chats to you and you can click on a dialogue. You, you, you've it's just, blown all that mystique then. Uh, yeah. It's just like there's Odin again. There's, yeah, there's Odin again. It <laughs> and, is. and you can walk around him and you can crouch down and you can peek under his cloak yeah, and things. Yeah. And that's... Hey, you know, hey, yeah. is, he a, is he a true Scotsman? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I think we would, yeah, we wanted to keep them in the background a bit more like mm. that. And I mean, in general with the, with the law, I think the idea was to certainly my thinking with it was to keep, to keep everything quite vague uh, as well, which to my mind fits the, the, you know, the, the influence, the roots of it. Um, because when you read, you know, when you read the, the Edda and the sagas and uh, there's, they contradict each other in places as all mythology does uh, yeah. because it's it, these are stories that have been told in lots of different ways by lots of different people um so i wanted to almost preserve a bit of that in the game that it's 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 never clear in the game <clears throat> and there are some fan theories you know is does it take place after ragnarok pre ragnarok during ragnarok it's, oh, how do, how do things tie in I, I wanted to ask you about this as well with so other things <laughs> okay uh, how, how do different things tie in together and i wanted to keep a bit of that and i mean this sounds <clears throat> this sounds again like i'm making an excuse <laughs> nice to, be, to, be lazy. <laughs> to be lazy but, yeah uh, well it's not meant to make sense it's not meant to make complete yeah. sense but um but in a way it, it sort of wasn't i wanted to keep a bit of that it feels to me more like you know genuine folklore or mythology if you mm -hmm. keep some ambivalence to it and some yeah. kind of room for it, different interpretations it, it is though because in you know i've said this so many times on here that geographically um obviously the viking age spans what 300 years like things things change things are different wherever where you are where geographically you are or who did you even like probably the next village over depending on who's told you who's taught who's forgotten things and then just thought shit i've forgotten this a little bit of the story i'm gonna i need to improvise now and add something in and then it just yeah. <laughs> it just gets legs and carries on exactly so yeah. all those things that are sort of oral histories like that i think the stories as they get passed down kind of like uh kind of like pebbles getting rubbed together and they just mm -hmm. get rubbed smooth but they get broken into pieces as well and you end up with all these beautiful little stories polished by the telling but they, they're not telling the same thing always because they've just mm -hmm. been in so many mouths if you like There's, that's uh, but that's and that's part of the beauty of it and that's part of why and then absolutely it, it, like people yeah. do people just get so hung up on wanting everything in in neat little boxes they want you know, and it's probably the same with Valheim. They just they just want the answer. They want it to be, yeah. This they want this to be the answer. This to be, and it's like, but sometimes it's nice to to not know and just be comfortable. Then yeah. like it, it can be all different. Um, I think one of the, the examples I can think of off the top of my head is uh, with the Sig Sig of the Dragon Slayer story. In in that there there's a part where in some of the tellings he he touches the, he's cooking Fafnir's heart. And he he touches it to test if it's cooked, and he burns his thumb, and he puts his thumb in his mouth, and then he realizes from the blood that he can now hear the birds speaking, and they tell him that Reagan's going to double cross him, and 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 whatnot. And you know that's part of the story. But in Ireland, it, um, when I when I did a video on on the, the Sigurdsson, I went to see Amelia Lorenzen, who's been on the podcast, message and said that there's a there's a story in Ireland about. It's not. It's not Sigurd. It's a completely different story, but it's similar in a sense. I think. I think it's like a salmon. It's like a salmon fisher or something. Or he's cooking a salmon, and he he does a similar thing. He tests if it's and like he bites his um, sucks his thumb or his finger or whatever, and then it doesn't. It's not the power to speak to animals, but it's like a different. It, it gets a different ability. Right. Yeah. So it's like they have a a very similar like bone structure, but the flesh is different uh, yeah, so yeah does this have a single origin point that's it it's fascinating isn't it i think and we'll, we'll, we'll just never have answers to most of those questions you know mm -hmm. where, where was it told first you know how did it did somebody obviously must have heard a story and then you can imagine you you would adapt it you adapt it for your audience you yeah. think that's good i like that that's going in to my <laughs> yeah, yeah. next telling of this other story that i like to tell um 
so uh, and I think that's to me that's that's part of the appeal of it that organic feel of all all old folklore and uh, you know yeah no it's 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 very human and you can just imagine because they they were performance pieces yeah you know, exactly. they're the performance right. pieces they're kind of done in front of people and and we all you know what am I what, one of one of the sayings you know I've heard tons is um, you know never let a little lie get in the t- in the way of a good story, and <laughs> yeah. it's it's true we've we've yeah. all we've every single one of us listened to this podcast at some point have been telling our friends a story or telling somebody something that's happened and we've just fluffed it up a little bit or we've added a, a little bit in for gravitas we're like well absolutely yeah we've all done it and everybody like, does it yeah yeah, yeah. it's not do like it. a it's and not I mean, a huge lie but it's just a little little yeah, thing like, exactly yeah don't 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 let the truth get in the way of a good story no exactly <laughs> you just think yeah sometimes it's it's which reminds me actually of something that i wanted to uh ask you or uh M- Mateus, or i'm sure somebody might be able to help me with this which is a it won't be me but i can try <laughs> it's a well it's a it's a, it's a local it's a it's a point of local history where i am on the isle of Wight, and um it's to do with the vikings because the island was a was a was an old stamping ground of the vikings um uh in the past not as much as where you are mm-hmm. but they used to uh, according to the anglo-saxon chronicles they used to winter on the island okay. crops and use it as a base yeah. uh so it, it it said i think in the chronicles it says that for however many winters they lay in the isle of Wight and ate out of hampshire and sussex uh so it, yeah. they used it as a kind of base for raiding yeah. a lot of the south coast um <clears throat> And an old chap that I used to know, this is 20, 30 years ago, who once said to me, um, and he was, he was, what reminded me of it was he was, he was definitely very much the sort of person who wouldn't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yeah, yeah. But he once said to me, there's a term on the Isle of Wight. And when we talk about people from the mainland, uh, we call them Oveners usually. And I think most people would assume, as I always did, that it just means because they're from over the water, they're from over the Solent. And he said to me one time, he said that, the the word Ovener actually he said it, it's a Viking word originally, and it was a word that the Vikings used <clears throat> to mean enemies because people from the Isle of Wight they lived in the Isle of Wight, uh, but so they obviously got on I guess they would have to have got on with people here they weren't raiding the Isle of Wight because mm-hmm. they were staying here all over the winter, but they so they said enemy for people from the mainland and pe- natives from the Isle of Wight picked up on that and started to use okay. that word for themselves and that's the root of the word Ovener and anyway as I say I kind of. I took it with a pinch of salt because I mean he had a story about a crocodile as well that was <laughs> unbelievable. So, so um, he's, he's not the most trustworthy of he's people. Not necessarily the most trustworthy. <laughs> he was lovely. He was a lovely, lovely old boy. But lovely guy. Always, well. uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, years later, when I was I, I taught English in China for a few years, and while I was there, I had a, a colleague from Denmark, and I told him this story one day, and he said, um, he said, oh, he said, actually, he said. In Danish now, again, hopefully somebody. Um, we, I mean, we have might be uh, at, least a, at least a Norwegian. In oh, the, fantastic! Somebody might be able to help me in out the, in the chat. I think a, a Finn, but Finn's very different. Um, I'm sure there there will be some someone in there that might. Somebody be will help. hopefully be able to help you because apparently, well, my, someone, my, my colleague from Denmark said that that uh, now I'm probably pronouncing it. Well, he, he, something like veneer, veneer could mean friend in Danish, okay. and he said he said. Irvinir, oh Venner, sorry, I've just seen the chat. Somebody's yeah. ah, and is it possible uh, Irvinir can mean like unfriend? Okay, something like that. I think he said to me, "En ven, friend." Uh, and, and so he said it's possible that yeah, Irvinir or something like that. Okay, it could be the root of Oven. I've not, I've never found anything out. There's nothing about it online or any books that I've read, but it's an interesting theory. Irvina, somebody said, well, that 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 could be it. It's it really, it's really pleasing to me. Sorry that somebody might be able to <laughs> solve this for me. Because you could be able a, to finally fix it. But yeah, it, it's it's quite fascinating that there's a this word Ovena. People here assume it means from over the over the there. Sea. Yeah. But um, as I say, when he said it to me, I sort of took it with a pinch of no longer friends, enemies. Oh, yeah. oh wow, that's fascinating. See, so maybe it, it could be. I mean, it might be. It's speculation, I guess, because as I say, there's no. No, no real nothing definite about where the term comes from but it it it, it strikes me as being a a fairly likely possibility that mm-hmm. people would have they, they they you know if if the danes are saying of Ir, of an or something yeah. ah, that's it that's what my friend jacob said to me that they put an uh in front of it to say yeah, the opposite yeah. of it yeah um so it strikes me as likely that the people 
here would have picked up on that word. And I mean, because the people from the Isle of Wight, we're notoriously self-sufficient anyway. So <laughs> consider ourselves separate to the mainland. So they would have they would have thought, um, oh, we like that word that the Vikings were using last winter. There's, there's <laughs> a lot. That. There is a lot that, that stick around. But I, I, you know what I've picked up from that story? Is that maybe there's a crocodile walking around the Isle of Man? <laughs> there might the be. White, sorry. Actually, if, if there that's might true, be. Oh my goodness! Yeah, if that's true, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look back on all the other things he told me. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's a maybe there's a crocodile somewhere. Yeah, this was this this was a this was a crocodile that bit him. Um, <laughs> it bit him quite seriously, but it got better because. It, it oh, know, no. yeah, it got so, better. I don't, I don't know. It just got better. It just, yeah. <laughs> he just got over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that just you know one day she's got better <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is why this is why i was never sure how seriously to take that story but but um thank you very much the people who answered that in the chat i could see the messages popping up that's really, yeah, so really Lisa, interesting Lisa and Ida, the uh, the two norwegians um, oh thank you there you go I, I it seems plausible there are a lot of a lot of it does doesn't it it's something like never almost to... worse prove i guess but it's an interesting bit of speculation as i said mm -hmm. there was a there is a viking connection here because they did um they did use the island as a base so yeah wonderful okay so i wanted to ask you about um this is it cir circling the little yes. Yes. the little kind of glowing fire objects so this is the when we you know like i said we played maybe six hours not nothing really a drop in the ocean compared to what you can play so this is one of the things that i picked up on the <clears throat> to me anyway like rang a bell of like oh i recognize i recognize that i recognize the word cert and the certling is like this little glowing fire like orb um so what are these <laughs> so the the law the law for that and this is again this is where um i wanted to be a bit ambivalent in terms of the chronology that people might be used to uh because the law behind that is that searcher has been was cast down by odin was defeated uh and stamped into fragments essentially okay. almost so the yeah. circlings are like blown embers they're like the, they're like little pieces of a mm -hmm. gestalt that was once a mighty foe um so that's kind of the, that and that is that is playing obviously very fast and loose with the actual <laughs> with the yeah. source material but yeah that's that's the idea behind them that they are like tiny fragments of search and you collect these to make portals right ah uh, they, they yes they are drop they something the thing that they drop uh what is it sorry i can't think that is called i can't remember but it is used in yeah, in crafting portals in the game uh I don't think there's a particular reason why behind that. Oh, uh, see, I thought I was on something. I, uh, I, was on, uh, uh, I was wondering whether um, by the time you've completed the game and you've collected all these little certlings, and you've made oh, all these I little poles. Well, the, is, you might be... are we are we going to get a a recreation of cert, and it's going to be the start of Ragnarok, well, like it, prophesized? You you might be sort of onto something there i can't i, I find it very difficult can't. to talk about the later parts of the, <laughs> the later parts of the game perhaps not in quite the way uh you thought but yeah but there is um yeah i can't i shouldn't say too You'd much I'll get, I'll get told off i'll get no, told no. off but there we, is there is more to come in uh, along yeah. those lines so, we yeah. can only the people here are going to hear that if there's anything you want to ever remove we can we can take. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's fine. That's that. I haven't said too much, so that's. No, no, that's no, no, good, but I better good. not. I better not say much more. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> you just, uh, just give me a little wink. And it's, and it's still a little <laughs> bit. It's still up in the air a little bit as well. Exactly what we do. I've got some. I've got some things that I'd love to do later yeah. in the game that I don't know if I'll get allowed to do. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, really? Okay. So we'll have um, to see how the story develops. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it is a shame that Mateus couldn't make it because he he loves helping with stuff. So if you if you do ever need any help, I'm sure I can give you his email or his contact. Oh, thank and, you. Well, that's, and you guys that's... can can talk because he does. He he doesn't. I'm I'm speaking for him here, but okay. <laughs> he does. <laughs> no, he, I'm sure I he would appreciate love... the offer on his behalf. That would be sometimes really useful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he would love to help out because again, whilst it is in Valheim, I'm sure as a you know as a writer, you want to make things as accurate and as Nice oh, absolutely, possible. yeah, and 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 it's drawn as I say. I I can't pretend to any great expertise myself, but I'm 
you know, I'm passionate about Nordic mythology and, you know, I, I read a lot and I always have read a lot. And it's, it's important to me to kind of, that it be informed by that. Um, I think what I tried to do most of all in Valheim, I guess, was actually to, as much as anything, just to try and, to try and keep some of the, um, more than the details, the, the mood of how it might have, how it might have felt to be, to be alive in that era and that context we're, we're, that we're setting the game in. Um, and I think it's sort of important as a writer that you, you believe mm-hmm. what you write, if that makes sense, that, that you, I can put myself in the frame of mind to yeah. believe, and, and, and some of it, um, I often had in mind, there's one of my favourite passages in, in, in all of sort of Nordic, ancient, old Nordic literature, um, is, again, Matthias would probably be, might be the one to have here, but it's in, uh, it's in the saga of Eric the Red, and it's, oh, I want to say, I want to say Thorstein, or I can't, somebody again might probably jump up and correct me, hopefully. There's, there's somebody, one of, one of the people in the saga of Eric the Red, uh, there's, a, there's a passage in there, and he dies. Um, he dies, and then later that night, he sits up. He sits up again. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favourite things. Um, and he doesn't do anything very special. In fact, he sits up, and he basically goes through some points of household management. He doesn't yeah, come yeah. back with, like, a message from the other side, or, oh, I saw Odin, he told me this. He sits up, and he calls he calls his household to him, and he goes through, like, I can't remember exactly what it is, but, you know, you better plant this in the yeah, yeah. In that field, and you need to do this and this, and that's going to be the wedding gift for such and such. Mm-hmm. And he goes through some quite basic business. Um, and then he also has a beautifully delicate moment where it says he speaks some words to his wife as well, but it doesn't tell us what he says because it's none of our business because it's, yeah, yeah. it's between the husband and wife. And it, so it just says that. It just says he speaks some words to his wife and it leaves it at that. Um, and then he lies down and he dies again. Um, and it's just, I don't know, the way it's told is so... Um, and there's no reason why they wouldn't believe that that yeah. could happen, that somebody could come back from the dead to settle a bit of business and die again. And actually, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not a doctor, but they've made, they, it seems plausible also from a modern perspective that maybe, maybe they just, maybe it did happen like that. Maybe they just thought he died. Um, yeah, maybe. But actually, he, you know, he wasn't quite dead yet. And then he did sit up. But, uh, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's just, I think if you immerse yourself in the sort of literature of a period like that, in those kind of stories, you always, you get a feel for how people, what it was like to live in a world where those, things were real mm-hmm. um because they were they didn't have any, any other explanations for it so um there's no reason for them to suspect that these things couldn't happen well, that, you know? that's it we actually had that conversation yesterday um the it's not it's not a belief anymore it's not a belief in the gods or it's not a belief in in trolls or or all these things that we call magic or mythical now it's not not so much a belief if it is real, you know, like if you, yeah. if, if to you, like it is, just, it's just as, it's as real as, you know, this mouse or my phone or the, the sofa I'm sat on. It's not, you don't, I don't believe this sofa's here. It's just, it's just here. Yeah. And that yeah. was kind of a similar, a similar thing, you know, it's, it's just part of That's the part earth. Of, of the world, of the world you live in. You wish you, I mean, there are, you know, there are, there are countries I've never been to and I've only seen pictures of them online, but I kind of take people's, word i kind of trust in in people to, that those countries actually do exist yeah uh, you know even if i haven't been there and i guess it would be the same if you if you're living if you're living in norway in the ninth century and you hear stories about trolls and probably somebody tells you they think they saw one mm-hmm. in the woods or something which is quite quite possible um and uh you would have no reason to doubt them really you know no. you, the, the, the stories are all around you there's a lot of things about the world you don't know um, it would be just as amazing for you probably to s- see an elephant, um, if not more amazing. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's. it's... Oh, I actually went to um, the Leeds Royal Armouries on Sunday with a friend of mine and his, his two kids. And I don't know if you know what the Royal Armouries is. It's, uh, it's a wonderful museum in the centre of Leeds. It's free. And it's basically it's just an, it's kind of like an, an armoury. It's old weapons from all different time periods from... They, they don't go really old. So maybe from 1400, like medieval period through to World War II. So they've got like loads of early Tommy guns and machine guns and everything. Um, and they have like a hunting section. 
but they have like a, a like a samurai kind of Japanese area, and there's like an armored. Would it be Japanese? Maybe it wouldn't be Japanese. Maybe it would be more Chinese, I guess. If there's an elephant, but either way, um, there's like a huge elephant with um all the armor on it, and you know it's got the head, the whole like headdress all coming down. It's tusk covered. It, it, um, it's trunk covered and it's got the two tusks, but they've got, sp- I didn't know this, they did this. They put spikes on the end of the tusks. They had like these things that they slotted on and like tightened on to make the tusks even more fucking right. dangerous than they right. already are. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, you know, there's a guy sat on top of it. And I was just like, I was, I was talking to my friend Will and I was like, if I've never seen this before and like it's an invading army coming towards to, to over to Europe and I see five of these things, I'm just yeah. giving up. That's, Am that, I? I'm not fucking with it. whatever yeah. this is. Like these <laughs> are other world layer. I've never seen these. I don't know what the hell these things are. You're clearly gods. Yeah. No, you would, not... you? I mean, that's a, that's a dragon for all intents and purposes. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just an impossible. You beast. Think nowadays, how weird that they believed that somebody could ever believe there was a dragon. Where you think, well, but yeah, you imagine that. If they, so that that's probably even more terrible. They see a war elephant. Yeah, <laughs> that's, and it's. <laughs> That's even it more. Was, it, yeah, it, this just looking at this thing, it was just awe inspiring. Just look at and also just the armor that they had. It's unbelievable. And I was like, this is it, you. You, if I've never seen it before, I'm just like, because if I'd never seen an elephant now, let alone with it covered in an armor and tamed <laughs> with somebody yeah. on the back of it that's trying to kill me, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is that thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's. Uh, it's just fascinating like all the different parts of the world and, and it just ties into that idea of if you've never seen it before and you see one or somebody sees one and they come back and tell you about it and they're going to fluff it up for a good story as we yeah, said earlier oh, absolutely yeah so yeah. this elephant is also you know a little bit taller a little bit bigger it breathes a little bit of fire yeah yeah <laughs> so, exactly yeah they'll, they'll see if, if they can see you sort of, if they can see you you're drifting a bit they'll, yeah we'll, they'll, they'll add another detail in <laughs> it's the crocodile elephant. story again yeah yeah, it just got better. Yeah. <laughs> it just got better. Uh, perfect. Uh, let's yeah, let's wrap this up and then we can let people ask you some questions in the in the Q and A. So, for anybody listening, we do do a Q and A with all our guests after the main show, where you can ask your questions, and that's Patreon exclusive. It's three pound a month to join us on Patreon. It's like buying me a cup of coffee, but you get the chance to ask Lee or any of our guests. You c- can jump on. You can either ask your question ahead of time on Patreon or on Discord or live in the chat. And we just get through and they get to ask, basically to answer your questions. Um, And also before we wrap up, I do have to give a shout out to Eddie, Edward Wallace once again, like my, one of, he's one of my absolute best friends <laughs> and he, he really helped me out with this episode. Like, you know, I, I do enjoy games, but there was no way that I had time. Oh, well, I, yeah. I, thank, I, thank, I, thank, thank you to him. And I'm thrilled he enjoyed it. Oh yeah, he loves it. Like I say, he loves games. So he was so excited when I was talking to you. Um, he work, he works for me as well. So like he's into this stuff a little bit, but he just enjoys. He just enjoys games. So he was really excited to like show me around the game and and teach me. Um, because if you know if I I, I was gonna I was actually gonna download it yesterday and just have a play. And I just thought I'm not gonna get anywhere in the in the three yes. four hours that I can commit to this. I'm not gonna have the worth to really know what's going on. So I, I, it was better to spend the time with someone that knew the game and just hang out and, and get to think. And, and, and I'll be honest, it's, it is quite terrifying at times as well. It is, it, it is a little yeah, bit. There when, are some moments in it. When these little, when you these, first, you first see the trolls as well. That was a standout yeah. moment for me. I remember when I was first playing it. Mm-hmm. And you have these little, uh, little creatures chasing you and they, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're hungry they're after you <laughs> they don't <laughs> stop um and they were yeah they're chasing us and i'm just i'm not even playing i'm like run out there run get away get away come on so yeah it's a it's a lot of fun what you guys have created is um it's a really amazing game and, and it's it makes sense why it's doing so well and it's sold so well and hopefully it just keeps on growing and when it finally gets released and hopefully Put on PlayStation because well, I do. Thank, thank I am a PlayStation much. boy, so I have to ask when that's coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I again, I can't really, I can't really say that would be a question, unfortunately, for uh, mm-hmm. uh, for Richard. So I'm not sure. I think the plan is obviously to make it as accessible to many people, of as course. many people as as possible. Um, 
yeah hopefully yeah, hopefully, hopefully it gets place, i guess yeah yeah hopefully. Hope, hopefully it does but yeah. lee thank you very much for for taking the time do you want to give thank you people uh let people know where they can find you or find the game maybe i don't know how uh, interested you are in people following you personally welcome to, i'm at uh williams on twitter which is w-i-w-y-u-m-s uh but <clears throat> i don't talk about very much interesting on on twitter to be honest i don't i don't post very much uh the game the game valheim is very easy to find it you can mm. wish this on on steam um uh and it's available as you said um on xbox now um i'm working on a, another game at the moment called crypt master as well which you can wish list uh on steam which is not to do with vikings although it does have a lot of wordplay in it including a lot of kennings and some things that were inspired by, oh, by nice. literature nice. um but yeah that can you can wish list, wish list that on steam as well um it's it's, it's free to wish list it and it's very good for your karma i believe it's it's karmically <laughs> rewarding <laughs> but no that's that's the only there that's the only plug i had to make um and uh yeah you know thank you very much for having me on it's been a real pleasure no, it's been a yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Go and go and wish list it. I'm gonna do it after when I finish this. I had my my steam apartment, so I'm gonna I'll do that right away as well. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. I always love episodes that are a little bit different, particularly something that I don't know a lot about. But I'm also like I said, I'm also interested. In. I grew up as a a gamer. I I enjoyed it. It's just lack of time so it's it's nice to talk about. I do understand I do like, that as well. as I said earlier. I don't, despite working in in video games, I don't have a or I don't have an awful lot of time to play games myself uh, these bet. days. It's it, it's hard to find the time, and you know when you've got a family and things, it's it's not easy. Absolutely, as we as we grow older. But yeah, let's go, let's go do a Q and A. Q&A. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. It's been brilliant. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>